And welcome to another VIP Mastercast segment. It's Ray and Maria here, the happily married hosts and producers of the Strip Live television talk show based in Las Vegas, founders of VegasNetMedia.com, and creators of VIPMastercast.com, where we showcase many of the world's most successful and influential people. We are joined by our special guest, Ken McArthur. Ken is the founder of JV Alert Live and is the best-selling author of Impact, How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions, and Make a Difference in a Noisy World. In this segment, Ken will be sharing his expert advice on the topic of joint venture partnering. Thanks so much for having me here. I, I really want to first uh, talk about what joint ventures really are. And there are a lo- there's a lot of misconceptions about joint ventures. People talked about joint ventures you know, in the old days as being, you know, a contract that was set up by legal teams and where you formed a new company and you actually uh, set up operations to achieve common goals together. Uh, And that can be one version of a joint venture to this day. But for most people, joint ventures are really about the ways that we work together in powerful, powerful ways uh, to, to enhance what we're doing. You know, the first joint venture that I ever did was a simple email. It started out as a relationship that I had with an early work-at-home uh, guru, a guy that had a heart of gold who really um, really epitomized uh, somebody that was every man, a, a common person that uh, everybody could relate to. And he had some success, and he'd built up a list of about 160,000 people and was connecting with those people in amazing ways and changing people's lives. And a simple email relationship just back and forth sharing resources and ideas uh, made it possible for us to create a joint venture that uh, generated over a quarter million dollars worth of recurring revenue in the first six months. How does something like that happen? I think it really happens all around the the relationship. Um, A joint venture should be Uh, as simple as getting a cup of coffee for somebody or as complicated as a lifetime relationship, building multi-million dollar uh, businesses. And all of those different forms work together. What you have to have in common are a couple of of simple steps. And the first step is to put your own ideas together and know what your goals are. In other words, think about the objectives that you might have in building a joint venture relationship. And to think about uh, what you want to give up and what you don't want to give up because joint ventures are all about give and take. You want to plan for the future. You know, what will happen if you actually have success? And then once you know what your goals are, you know what your ideas and uh, how you want to achieve them and how you want to structure a relationship in which it's a give and take kind of a situation and planning for the future, then you want to go to the second step. So the first step is actually to put together your ideas, know your goals, get that clear in your head. The second step is to locate people who can help with your projects. Now, there are lots of ways that you can uh, identify who those people are. We as human beings tend to clump into uh, communities. We tend to group and uh, work together just in a natural kind of a way. And so no matter what your product or service is, uh, if there are people that are interested in that problem or if they're interested in that kind of a solution, they're going to be grouped together. They're going to be grouped around key influencers that really have um, an impact in that particular kind of an area. And what you can do is you can basically go out and find those people and figure out how to motivate those people to take action and to get involved with the things that you want to accomplish. Um, So the first step, as I said, was to put together your ideas, know what your goals are, think about what you want to do and how you want to achieve those goals, think about what you want to give up and what you don't want to get up, and, and plan for the future. That's the planning stage. Then the second stage is locate people who can help with your projects. Now, these days on the Internet, it's pretty easy to identify those key influencers because they're the people that people are listening to. You know, we all have people that we know, like, and trust. If I were to go out and simply 
look for somebody to repair my car, for instance, uh, I wouldn't have an, an idea where to start because I don't know much about cars. So I would turn to the people people that I would think would be most likely to be able to help in that kind of a scenario. And so I might uh, ask a, a guy who seems like he likes cars, <laughs> who's the best mechanic, who should I turn to, who should I trust? And all communities are like that, you know, whether it's our local community and it's just getting a car repaired or it's an international community and we're looking for advice from the top experts in the world. It's all based on who you respect, who you feel like you can trust. I believe all sales are based on on um, on trust and value. And so we identify really easily people who uh, we can trust and people who have valuable contributions to uh, bring to the table. The next step, the third step, is to build a relationship with those people one at a time. You know, it could be one simple phone call, one idea tossed back and forth between two people. You don't want to push. You just want to simply explore the possibilities, build the relationship before you try to make a deal. On my first joint venture, I never even talked to the guy on the phone. It was just simple emails going back and forth. Um, the guy had a newsletter, simple a newsletter, and I would go back and say, you know, I really enjoyed that post you did. And over time, we developed a relationship just through the communication of those emails. And then, because I had really t taken a look at uh, the assets that I had to bring to the table, I started uh, telling him about things that uh, I thought that maybe we could work together. Um, you know, I tried to listen to what people have to say because listening is so, so important in building a re relationship and to respond to their needs and to, to try to find situations in which both people can win uh, so that both people can have a real powerful, powerful uh, impact and get the most leverage out of whatever relationship that you have. So finding those people is the next step, but the, but the real uh, step that has to take place as immediate follow-up is to build the power of that relationship and then motivate those people to take action. We're all motivated on different core values, and so many times people think that um, that large list owners or powerful influencers are motivated just by the money, and in a lot of cases, that's just not the the main uh, objective. You know, we we think that um, we think that uh, people are all about the money, and sometimes when people are really successful, money is the least uh, motivating factor on their list. As a matter of fact, most people want to protect the relationship that they have and uh, with, their, with their clients and with their customers. So the first uh, reaction is simply to, to uh, protect those relationships. So after you've uh, identified who the people are, you've really built the relationship, the next step is to, um, you know, hammer out responsibilities. You know, find out who has the ownership and who has the liabilities and check out situations which the best form that you possibly can for a joint venture. And to build that joint venture so it really produces exponential results. Uh, you can do that in so many different ways because we work together. Uh, when we work together, uh, we can do so much more than we possibly can uh, when we work alone. Over the years, you know, the JV Alert Live events, I've seen it over and over and over again. When we combine resources, when we combine uh, our knowledge, when we combine our expertise, it's almost like a tidal wave of, um, of impact that builds up. Um, and and um, working together, um, it's so much more powerful than uh, me, for instance, sitting in my basement uh, working all by myself. When I was a programmer, I used to actually go through steps and, uh, you know, try and figure out programming problems all by myself, and I could take weeks on that. Insights come through the collective knowledge that we have together, and uh, powerful joint ventures come the same way. So <clears throat> the, the goal is to make something bigger and not forget the back end because so many times profits can be much higher on the back end than your original sale, and joint venture partners can help you build 
bigger and more profitable products, you know, by combining the resources, by combi combining promotional efforts, and by combining products to make something even better. So here's the basics again. First, you need to pull together your ideas and know what your goals are. So step number one, get your ideas together. Think about how you want to do it, how you want to achieve those goals. Think about what you want to give up and what you don't want to give up and plan for the future. Second step is locate the people who can help with your projects. You know, use the available tools to find out who's trusted, who has an audience that listens to them and who you respect and who you feel that you can trust. The third step is to build a relationship with those people one step at a time. You know, one simple phone call, one idea tossed back and forth between two people. Don't push, just explore the possibilities, build the relationships before you try to make the deal. The next part is to listen to what people have to say, to respond to their needs and find situations in which both of you can win. And when you find those situations, to make sure that you meet your partner's needs and your needs. And when you've done that, stop. There's no need to give away the farm, but you need to make sure that everybody wins. Hammer out all those responsibilities. Find out who has the ownership and who has the liabilities. Then check those situations and find the best form that you possibly can for this joint venture. Build your joint venture so that it produces exponential results because when you work together with other people, you get those kinds of uh, exponential results. You can make something even bigger. Finally, last step, don't forget the back end. Many times profits can be much higher on the back end when you're, than your original sale, and joint venture partners can help you build bigger and more profitable products by combining the resources, by combining promotional attempts, and by combining products to make something even bigger. And that was Ken MacArthur giving you the goods with stellar content on JV Partnering. We are so honored to have him as a guest expert. For more information on Ken and his products, go to KenMacArthur.com or JVAlertLive.com. And for more expert training on video and authority marketing, head over to VIPMasterCast.com, and we'll see you next time.